even find it. So here, are, uh, we saw this yesterday, but I want to go over the games, the teams who have what you think are a legitimate shot to be in the Big 12 championship game. There are the standings, Oklahoma at the top, and then a group at Iowa State 3-1. and one. We'll have a, a writer. In fact, again tomorrow, Chris Williams on them. Oklahoma State, Texas, K-State, and West Virginia, all 2-1. and one. Let's just focus on those four 2-1 and one teams. Who, in your opinion, has staying power? Obviously, I think people will say Texas. Who else in that group do you think has staying power to be going into the end or middle of November in still uh, having a chance to play for the championship? I, I would just say Kansas State. I think that um, you know they've, they've shown it um, that they can – you know, reboot, rebuild. You know, you know, fix things in season. Last week's game was a was a great example of that. If Will Howard gets completely healthy, then they've got you know some some really outstanding, interesting depth in that quarterback position. I think they'll get it figured out. The same thing kind of happened to them last year. Remember, they lost to Tulane early. They lost to Missouri early. You know, they've they've lost one can, uh, conference game so far, but. Yeah, I think I think it's them. I think they've got the best team to do that. Iowa State's is is such a huge surprise to me right now. I don't see them hanging with it very long, but you know, um, stranger things have happened, and they've got a really good coach. But I would say Kansas State to me is the is the one outside of Texas who you know probably shouldn't lose again. Yeah, I was gonna say, are we including Texas in yeah, there? Yeah, I mentioned yeah, them as, okay. as to me, it's obvious. But yeah, yeah. go ahead and discuss them. Yes. Yeah, I mean, obviously Texas. I think they're very clearly one B or number two, uh, however you want to slice that up. And I'm sure that some of their fan base thinks they're still number one, despite the loss to Oklahoma. But uh, head to head is what it is. So they're they're number two. Uh, at best, I think they're number two at worst, though. Um, you know, K-State uh, with Avery Johnson coming in and, and lighting the world on fire the way that he did. You know, I don't know if that's something you can expect week in and week out with a young quarterback, but, um, you know, that was a, a great sign, especially amidst Will Howard's struggles. Uh, so, yeah, I think K-State's still very much in the mix. Um, I don't know. I'm Like, I'm not ready to rule anybody out, quite frankly. Um, I think that everybody's sitting at 2-1. and one. You know, I'm not sold that Oklahoma State's going to win a bunch more versus how many they lose. I'm, you know, not sold on West Virginia per se, but, you know, they've got varying degrees of difficulty as far as their schedules go. Uh, so that's going to factor in. And uh, I think that Right now, yeah, Texas is the safe bet. K-State's the safer bet uh, as well of the other remaining schools. But, I mean, Oklahoma State and West Virginia and Iowa State, I mean, Iowa State's already got three wins. Yep. So they're, they're already a leg up on uh, most of the others. So at three and one, I mean, they're sitting really pretty right now. So, yeah, them, the Cowboys, and the Mountaineers, I don't know really how to separate those groups. And I don't know how far off they even are away from a Kansas State. I, I still feel like I need to see more. But um, I think it's also just a – a situation where uh, I think I've said it before, where I do think there is that top two, and then I think there's that group of teams that are just kind of there. And any given week, they can uh, beat each other depending on you know the circumstances. And, and I, I don't think there's a clear cut, just you know, separate separation between a, a K State versus a, a West Virginia or an Oklahoma State versus an Iowa State right now. Some of the responses uh, in the chat room about who they believe are some of them, and we'll get back to the rest of the standings in a minute. Uh, I would think that most of them uh, have said that it's going to be TCU, Kansas State. Iowa State, though, Craig, they have one more win than everybody else, which matters when you're having to play the nine conference games. West Virginia, Paxton, Sam said K-State, Bracket Cat said KSU, and among others. Is there somebody, and Garrett, if you wouldn't mind, and you said, Craig, that I haven't ruled out anybody, because uh, if you have three losses, it's going to be hard, obviously. No, but, I yeah, we're talking it, about one-loss yeah. teams here. So is there anybody below that group that has two losses or more in that group, and we just had Jared Wiley on from TCU, that could jump into the fray before it's said and done? Because they really have no room for error with the two losses. Yeah, it's TCU. Um, I don't trust Kansas's defense, and is Jalen Daniels ever going to get healthy? Maybe that doesn't matter because Jason Beans played pretty well, um, but that defense is – is a, a bit of an issue for them. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't have as much faith that Kansas is going to keep it going the rest of the way and, like, hop back into the mix. I feel like if Jalen Daniels came back healthy, then, you know, maybe I, I, I give that more consideration. But of the two lost teams, which is why I didn't include TCU in the previous talk, um, yeah, I would say it's TCU, pretty clear in a way. Um, oh, oh, I'm and sorry. I put them right there neck and neck with uh, most of – 
if not all those one loss teams right there. Yeah. Yeah. I would say TCU again, if Jalen Daniels is healthy, if Jalen Daniels is healthy, then maybe Kansas isn't even in the spot. And we're talking about them right. contending right. Uh, at the top, but he's not. And you know, he's got a back injury and anybody who's ever had, like they don't really go away. Like they just get varying, you know, issues. You know, so you look, you've got back pain, yep. you know, it, there's days where you don't have it at all, and then there's days where you have it and you you feel like somebody shot you. So it's just one of those deals. So I don't know it, and he's still going to get hit when he comes back. So that hurts your everything when he get hit. So I I think you got to take Kansas out of it. But TCU uh, and they're playing with Josh Hoover now for the foreseeable future because n- no telling when Chandler Morris is going to be back. If that offense continues to do what it did last week, then they're going to be hard to stop for anybody. So yeah, they, they could easily get back up in there. And, look, they've got the moxie to do it. They've got experienced guys on the, the team. They've got guys, transfers who have been other places, have had success, um, and, and have been in conference races. So, yeah, they've got enough veterans on that team, even though not all of them have been there for all that long, to, I think, have weathered the storm of where, you know, last week the reason I, I, I picked BYU is – Uh, A, backup quarterback, and B, it just felt like they were staring on the precipice of a a collapse, but they proved me wrong in an outstanding way uh, this last week. Yeah, I think, you know, it was a great showing for Hoover, but, you know, we saw a really good showing from Chandler Morris and haven't seen anything like that ever since. So we need to see Hoover do it a bit more, but he did show some good things and he seemed to open some things up and and just it was refreshing uh, what the offense looked like with him there. So, yeah, I need to see more, but uh, there's plenty of reason for optimism. And if he, in fact, is you know, the guy that he can be, then, yeah, they've got all the other pieces, I think, to grow along the way or having grown up to this point um, with what they did, like Paul said, in the offseason where, you know, some drop-off was expected, but I think even the drop-off they've experienced is more than I've expected and I think more than they expected um, given how they attempted to reload. So maybe that's starting to all kind of come together now. Again, we'll see. It was one game. Um, and now there's film on him, and now there's you know there's going to be some reaction to him specifically. Mm-hmm. So let's see how he deals with that. But yeah, th- I would have to say they're they're they've got to be arguably the most talented team that's in that mix with Kansas State maybe right there as well. Um, but I can't see where there would be really an argument that any of those others would be on that same level talent wise. But again, that doesn't mean the end all be all necessarily. So if you have two conference losses, you absolutely can't afford a third. And it's, it's easy to, well, somebody could get it on a run. Sure they can, but you have no room for error. And who knows, do you have Texas? Do you have Oklahoma? Do you have both of them on your schedule along with someone else will get hot in that group, whether it's a Kansas state or who it might be, will get hot in that group. Alex, thank you guys and gentlemen for all the great insights and interviews. I love it. Thank you very much. Brock said the top six all have a legitimate shot. Iowa yeah. State is like the pet cemetery. You bury them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh. you know, good defense yeah. travels. And uh, Rocco Beck, so long as he plays, you know, pretty well. I mean, the run game, you know, still need to flesh that out some more. But they've got some good receivers. And, um, yeah, I think that they're, they're sustain- that what they're doing is sustainable um, because – you don't expect them to go win by scoring 40 points or do, you know, like I think that they've got a formula that works for them so long as, you know, Rocco Beck protects the football and so long as they can get a little bit of the run game going. Um, But yeah, that defense is going to travel everywhere and they're going to be a hard out. And I think that's been the case now for years, but uh, we we need a little bit of a reminder as they suffered a little bit of a a step back. And now I think we're getting that reminder of like, oh yeah, here comes Iowa state. Oh yeah. That's why Matt Campbell is coveted every off season. Oh yeah. It's amazing. The job that he's done and, you know, so on and so forth. Speaking of them, uh, Garrett, that direct message that I received from CFB Plus, oh, my God, I got it. I thought it was a little bit larger than that. Let me try to see if I can find the page from, hold on, that just caught me off guard. Uh, I can't read that. It's too small. This was from CFB Plus. Here's some food for thought on Iowa State. He's talking about, I know Baylor fans want Aranda. Gone, and this year is nothing short of a disaster. But let's look at Iowa State and what Matt Campbell's been through. 2020 Big 12 championship game appearance, and they won the Fiesta Bowl. Then they went seven and six, lost in a bowl game. Then they stepped back to four and eight in 2022. They are currently four and three, look pretty good. If I'm not mistaken, there's a chance they return 18 starters next year, maybe give Aranda some more time and not have a knee jerk reaction. 
I don't think it's knee jerk. Uh, I think that the brand of football we've been watching for going back to halfway through last year has been pretty blah and pretty uninspiring. And so I understand that. But you're also talking about a program that's won three Big Twelve titles with three different uh, with two different head coaches and played for a third with a third different head coach. So. You know, Matt Campbell is the greatest Iowa State head football coach in history, right? Most successful. And that's one thing. And, and you're right. Give it time. Not every year is going to be great. But I think from the Baylor standpoint is, okay, if all this stuff's changing, especially the landscape and NIL and all these different things, how long are you going to wait until you finally decide, no, wait, that is, uh, yep, we were wrong. Like, or no, this is not going to turn around. And that's the, the major question they have right now. Now, some of that may be out of their control um, where, you know, they are obviously not going to do anything midseason. And maybe they have to work on more of the, the buyout and how all that would work. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that that's, an impe- uh, you know, that's impeding any type of a decision um, and that it's impossible to get around. But I just think it's a, it's a long-growing thing. Like, at least you get a little spark here and there. But for the standard that's been set here, I don't think it's realistic to think that every single year they're going to be in Big 12 contention and there's never going to be a drop-off. But look how long this drop-off has been going on now. It's been going on since the middle of last year, and there's no sign that it's getting any better. And they they are they're dogs going to Cincinnati this week. The only game they might be favored in the rest of the way is Houston, and by the time that rolls around, they might not be favored in that game. So, like, I get what you're saying, and, and you're, you're right, but the patience has been lapped over already. Like, people were pay- – like, I, you know, last year, was into the, they made changes in the offseason – and then you got off the start you got off to, and there's no end in sight for the struggles. And I think that's where it's just all sort of bubbling up and bubbling over. And how long can you expect a fan base to be patient if you're going on, what, like two years? I mean, is that long enough to finally go, like, all right, enough already? Because it's been a year. It's been a year straight of just, yeah. What's so- interesting to me is that he won a Big 12 title, and he was a genius, a Jedi. He was this different animal of a coach. And, yes, the, the narrative at the time, Correct me if I'm wrong, was that he took Matt Rule's players and then made them even better. Now he's losing, and he won in 2021 with Matt Rule's players. Can you have both? Can it be both? I mean, I don't know. I don't really get into that dumb argument about uh, his players versus whose players and all that. I think that that's something you bring up when you're just trying to shoot holes in the guy a little bit more. Because, sure. I mean, whatever, ha- like whoever's players they were, he went re- and won with them. And um, it's not like he just took finished products and, like, oh, I'll take all this stuff that's already done and just place it in front of me. It's like, no, he had to help out uh, Jalen Petrie and Terrell Bernard and all of that. I do think the recruiting part of it is a major question. Like, that's the other thing, too, is uh, I would assume, and I don't know, I haven't got deep in these conversations, but that Iowa State fans are pretty content with where they are recruiting-wise, talent evaluation-wise, things like that. Like, you still see players coming up, and they're they're good players, and and you're reloading uh, as much as rebuilding. And I think the question right now for Baylor is, are they even reloading? Are they rebuilding? Like, what are they doing exactly? Because there was a whole conversation earlier about, like, they don't have the right guys in the O-line. Well, they had an entire offseason and didn't address it to the to the point that they needed to, right? Um, because they didn't have the scholarship. Like, so their, their distribution's not even, like, in line right now as far as how their numbers are doled out because they clearly needed more offensive linemen, but they couldn't go get more because their numbers were weren't right. So... I just think it's bigger than just the wins and the losses, and they're in a little bit of a rut. I think it's it's a legitimate question about recruiting, about the roster talent, about development, and about where all of it's going. And I just don't know that you can wait another year and it all just be two and ten again or something like that, and then look up and finally go, oh, all right, okay, cool. It it, it is it is what it is. I I, I don't know, and I know that that's going to be. You know, Mac Rhodes' decisions. I'm certainly not calling for an ouster by any means. I want to see how the rest of this season plays out. But I don't think it's an Iowa State situation. Iowa State is grateful for Matt Campbell. Baylor fans have seen better, and they've seen it multiple times in recent years. And this is going backwards. It's not even staying in place. Yeah, because.